Every year, thousands of Hindu devotees come to visit the sacred Kailash Parvat and Mansarovar Lake, situated in the China's autonomous region of Tibet from across the globe, especially neighboring country India via Nepal. Tibet is the world's highest plateau, which is surrounded by Himalayan range. Tibet is taken as a unique land because of its climate, height and land structure. It has so many high mountains and it is also the source place of many rivers like Brahmaputra, Satlej, Indus and Karnali. Most of the pilgrims travel to China's autonomous region Tibet via Nepal's route because it is the shortest and easiest. The managing director of Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition Private Limited, Mr. Ganesh Nyopani, welcomed all the Indian origin Hindu guests from USA, Canada, UK, Malaysia, and New Zealand in a team coming for Kailash Mansarovar tour on arrival at Trivuvan International Airport with Rudraksha garland and flowers. Then, guests are transferred to five-star hotel Radisson with best accommodation provisions. In the evening time, pilgrims are taken to Pashupatinath Temple for Arati Darshan. They are well guided by religious guide who clarifies them about the importance of the temple, Arati, and to have divine view of Lord Pashupatinath. The currently appeared Pashupatinath has been mentioned in the Veda, sacred scriptures of the Hindus, while other Jyotir Linga has been mentioned only in the mythological books. According to this, Tatpurus is at east, Sadhojath is at west, Bamdev is at north, and Aghor is at south, and Ishan is at upright side inside Pashupatinath temple. All these forms are lively visible besides Ishan, which cannot be seen by our virtual eyes. Next day, early in the morning, Kailash pilgrims are taken to Pashupatinath for Rudra consecration called Rudravishek. Eleven Brahmins or priests prepare for fire offering home in the pavilion Mandap and do Sankalpa Puja in the beginning, followed by Swasti Bachan preaching, Nyas, Rudra preaching, and Mahamritunjad death victory puja. The word Rudra, meaning fearful Lord Shiva, has come from Rudravi Sheikh, Rudranti Iti Rudri, Rudri Yogi Metal. It means there is pain, violence, greed among people in this earth and we perform religious hymn in praise of God Shiva so that he escapes people from all these miseries of life and grants justice, good health, prosperity, peace and salvation. This is why Rudri is done for peaceful life. We conduct worshipping puja inside the temple premises under the guidance of pujari or priest of the main temple for our successful Kailash Mansarovar trip. We usually perform this kind of puja with every team before starting Kailash Mansarovar Yatra.
After completing all these rituals at Pashupatinath temple, pilgrims are taken to have divine view or darshan, the place of tallest Shiva idol Sangha. and Doleshwar Mahadev. It is regarded as the head of Lord Kedarnath. Then, pilgrims are taken back to their hotel for a meal and to take some rest. Next day, Kailash tour begins early in the morning at 6 a.m. after having breakfast from Kathmandu. Travelling through Prithivi Highway, passing Thankot, Nobise, Galchi and Trishuli Bazaar of Trishuli Highway, Bitravati, Kalikastan, our journey extends to Ramche. After that, we reach to headquarter of Rasuwa district, Dhunche. While moving forward via Pasang Lamu Highway, journey terminates at Syabrubesi for a night stay. Situated at the adjoining point of two rivers, Botekosi River flowing from Kirung and Langtang River flowing from Langtang, this Syabrubesi market is at an altitude of 1450 meters above sea level. This is a place for overnight stay today. Next morning, we take breakfast and move ahead traveling to Timure, Raswagari and reach Miteri Bridge at Kerung. While moving forward from Timure, we reach to Nepalese immigration office after crossing Kerung Bridge, just at its side is a house that is the Tibetan Immigration Office. Pilgrims get into coach and move towards Kerung. A small Kerung market, which is 27 kilometers far from Mitheri Bridge, is situated at an altitude of 2,700 meters above sea level. We can find suitable hotels, guest houses and lodges for tourists at this market. We stay overnight here. Zongkha is 70 kilometers far from Kirung. It is situated at an elevation of 3000 meters above sea level. After having breakfast at Kirung market, and reach to Saga for a night stay. There are four-star hotels for accommodation. This very beautiful place is Saga Bazaar. We stay two nights here to acclimatize and overcome high altitude sickness. After two nights stay at Saga, we move forward and reach to the adjoining point of Brahmaputra River. Brahmaputra is basically formed from the amalgamation of two rivers, one flowing from Gandhi Sea River of Himalayan range and other is Tima Yangzhong River flowing from Tibetan Himalayan ranges and flow through Saga, Sigatse and other places at Tibet and ultimately gets mixed into the Gulf of Bengal. Passing Dongba, Prayang. Here we stop our van or bus and have our lunch. 
After lunch, driving continues. We reach at Hor, near the holy lake Mansarovar, observing beautiful scenes and naked hills. From here, we can have the fantastic view of Mansarovar Lake, Mount Gurla Mandata and Kailash Parvat. The Mansarovar Lake circumambulation is of a total of 102 kilometers distance. According to the local people, it takes three days to circumambulate for local residents, but it takes five to seven days for the tourists or pilgrims by walking. This is the place called Hor, and from here, the circumambulation of Mansarovar Lake begins. We should travel via blue bus organized by Nangri Tourism Board. It is strictly compulsory to travel by blue bus while circumambulating Mansarovar Lake. The lake is very beautiful. We cannot identify the other part of the lake by our bare eyes. Ducks are playing and swimming in the edge of the lake. We reach to Chiu Monastery after approximately two hours driving from Hor. There are mud-built lodges and guest houses. This is the guest house that we have chosen to stay here. Mansarovar Lake also known as Brahma's Lake or Mapam Yumtso Lake is situated at an elevation of 4,850 meters above sea level. The word Manas means mind or consciousness and Sarovar means lake. It has held deep spiritual influence and wide religious implications among Hindus and Buddhists. Making round of the lake and taking a dip in it is believed to purge one's soul from sins and the body from sickness. This lake is so gigantic that it takes three full days to just go around its peripheries. Ancient Hindu scriptures indicate this lake as a must-visit place for someone who wants to attain salvation, the highest level of achievement in Hindu religion. The cascading waves of the lake in the wind look very charming. As described in Ramayana, it is said that the person who moves around the Mansarovar lake and bathes with its pure water reaches the heaven directly after death. Similarly, it is written that the person who drinks the water of this lake recognizes the Shiva Lok, the palace of Lord Shiva. Kailash Parvat is situated about 58 kilometers far in the north from Mansarovar Lake. <laughs> According to Hindu traditional heresy, it is believed that Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati take bath each day at 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. in this lake. It is said that pilgrims who stay at this place at night, they can lively watch the God there. Mainly it is believed that people can see or visit the god Shiva and goddess Parvati at the night of full moon. This Mansarovar lake covers a very large area that is pure place. It is mentioned in Hindu religious books that all the Hindus must reach there at least once in their lifetime. Next day, in the morning, pilgrims are going to Mansarovar Lake, riding on the bus or walking from the guest house or mud houses. 
pilgrims are seen taking holy dip into the lake offering water flowers money to the god and splashing water among each other with much joy and enthusiasm all the pilgrims are seen meditating for lord shiva and reciting the names of their ancestral gods performing homes offering grains mixed with butter to the fire in the name of gods in order to relieve themselves from any kind of sins which they might have committed knowingly or unknowingly everybody is doing aarti oil fed lamps and praying by joining their hands as the weather is clear today pilgrims are able to gaze upon the beautiful mansarovar lake and kailash parvat comfortably after bathing at mansarovar lake we return back to hotel riding on bus and we stop for a while in front of chiu monastery and observe kailash parvat mansarovar and rakshas lake rakshas tal monster lake this lake is named on the basis of hindu traditional story hindu people believe that carnivorous monsters are hiding into the dark water on the basis of this belief people call it rakshas tal and stay away from this lake believing it as the symbol of dark and destructive power According to traditional religious story the water of this lake is poisonous and fatal so to replace the poisonous water of this lake a tunnel was made from Mansarovar lake the pure water of this lake and a golden fish was sent in this lake late this fish was found alive from it people's negative attitude towards the lake changed and they started to go nearer to it but they still don't drink the water according to hindu mythology in treta yuga the monster ravana has made lord shiva happy meditating in this lake rakshas lake lies in the west to mansarovar lake it is situated at an altitude of 4540 meters above the sea level in mansarovar lake there are many birds including ducks but in rakshas lake there are no any birds at all now we are going towards darchan darchan is also known as the golden city located at the base of kailash parvat When we reach at Darchin we directly entered into the four star hotel Kailash Himalaya we get off the coach and move towards the room and rest for some time Today we are preparing for Kailash circumambulation or kora we get into the bus and move towards yamadwar observing darchen city it takes 20 minutes for blue bus to reach there as it is at the distance of only 7 kilometers this place is also known as tarboche getting off from the bus at yamadwar all the pilgrims are offering to lord shiva then we moved around the yamadwar for three times according to hindu religion this place is known as the gate of the god of death yamadwar from here physically disabled pilgrims distantly pay homage to kailash parvat and return home because the visit of yamadwar is believed to get equally religious gain as they do for kailash parvat itself Journey on foot begins from Yamadwar. This path trail is somehow busy 
with pilgrims, horses, local porters, yaks and Nepali workers. The sacred religious place Kailash Parvat is located on the height of 6,714 meters above sea level. This region is supposed to be at the most pure religious place. It is supposed to be the central part of the world and origin of the world before the origin of Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism. Kailash Parvat is glorified in the holy books like Ramayana and Mahabharata. According to the ancient Asian stories, the civilization is incomplete without the description of Kailash Parvat. Kailash Parvat is located in Tibet. Scientific research of this region is not satisfactory. Different religious groups like Shaiva, Hindu, Buddhist, Jain and Bonpo are respecting Kailash equally though they explained it differently. In the Shaiva and Buddhist traditional literature, Kailash is described as the part of Sumeru which is supposed to be the center of the world. It is believed to be the residence of Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati as per Hindus. Buddhists respect it in the name of Kang Rinpoche. Buddhists have accepted Kailash and Mansarovar as great natural mandala. Mandala for them is the means of respect and salvation. Jains worship as Ashtapal for this isolated peak. The total periphery of Mount Kailash is 53 kilometers and pilgrims should walk 38 kilometers within three days. As described in Hindu myth, a person who moves around the Kailash Parvat will be free from all the sins made in lifetime. If they move round the Parvat for 108 times, they directly get Nirvana. It is also said that a person who moves Nandi once, he or she gets return as equal of moving around the Kailash for 13 times. We start our journey for three days from Yamadwar. The necessary stuffs were carried by yaks, porters and horses. Those who need horses and porters have to request Tibetan guide at least two days earlier for booking. Those who can't walk on their foot can visit it riding on horse as well. From Yamadwar, we go to Tading Jongkhang after three hours walking through the bank of Lachu River for a lunch spot. The western face of Kailash Parvat is clearly seen from here. Below the Parvat, we can see a huge stone or portrayed elephant shape which is also called Airavat. It is believed God Indra rode on it. After two hours long walk, we can reach to Dirapuk. There is a Dirapuk monastery situated on the edge of Lachu River. The name of this place is given from the name of monastery itself. This monastery is located on the height of 4,900 meters above sea level. The scene of Kailash from here is like the heaven. Hundreds of pilgrims arrive at Dirapuk from Yamadwar riding on the horse or on their foot. Kailash Parvat is regarded as the form of Lord Shiva and the water flowing from its snowy tip is worshipped as Holy River Ganges or Ganga. Walking 
for about three hours steep upward, we can reach at the bottom of this holy mountain. This is called Kailash Touch Tour. It means religiously touching the feet of Lord Shiva. Mount Kailash is seen in between Mount Manjushri at the right side and Mount Bajrapani on the left side. River Ganges originated from Mount Kailash meets Lachu River and gets mixed into Rakshas Lake. Today we have to go for Dolmala Pass 5636 meters and the weather is also suitable. So, after breakfast, we move towards Dolmala Pass. After one and a half hour walking from Dirapuk, we arrived at Shivasthal. The normal route for Kailash circumambulation is through Ganesh Kunda, Dolmala and Gauri Kunda. This scene is of Dolmala Pass. This is on the height of 5,636 meters from the sea level. This is the tallest and most exciting place of our journey. People can worship here. Our pilgrims are busy in capturing photographs. In this pass, people may suffer from headache and vomiting, but it becomes normal as soon as they climb down. After walking down for 10 minutes, we can see Gauri Kunda. Walking steep downward for about one hour from Dolmala Pass to Sapchidatok, as the way is quite difficult and steep, there are three tiny tea shops at Sapchidatok where we relax with a sip of tea and also drink water. After resting for some time, we again move forward. The route after this is straight forward and we can also ride horse from here. Three hours of walking takes us to Juthulpuk that is known as the least facilitated place of this journey. This is the second day of our circumambulation. On the next day, we begin to move early in the morning after having our breakfast. After walking for three hours, we reach to Chongdo. Our trekking ends from this place as we can travel by vehicles from here unloading all our stuffs from the yak we farewell the caretakers of yak and reach Darchen during three-day Kailash Parikrama or Kailash round One can see four faces of Kailash Parvat, which are South Face, West Face, North Face and East Face. Pilgrims can do worship or darshan of four different faces of Kailash Parvat. We always try to keep our guests happy and satisfied, therefore we have managed for well-behaving, friendly human resource with best cooks for serving tasty food to our valuable guests. After taking our day meal, we proceed towards Mansarovar Lake. Pilgrims fetch sacred water of Mansarovar and move forward. We follow the same way to Tsaga, Zongkha Kirum, Rasuwagari, Dhunche, Trishuli Bazaar and reach to Kathmandu. The journey of Kailash and Mansarovar is very important not only from religious point of view. 
it is equally significant from the perspective of tourism. The management of this journey is made by Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition Private Limited, situated in Kathmandu, Nepal. We are waiting for you to join us for such an exciting and unforgettable trip. Atithi Devo Bhava, guest is God.